here we are into the season and finally I can pick this watermelon this is the sign the tendril has become brown and from what I understand you can knock on it you can look at its size well that's pretty big or you can look at the rest of the plant and see if it's pretty much at its end of its life because it's the end of the season but one of the most sure sign ways of figuring this out is trace the watermelon up to its nearest tendril and that tendril if it's turned brown from the sources I've looked at that's one of the best indications as to is as to if your watermelon is ready so let's get to it and chop this baby off and enjoy this yummy treat that we've worked so hard for all season this again came from just one tank and I got a little watermelon off it already but it was but it was it was too small it drinks a lot of water if you just want to do something for fun grow a big watermelon anyway they're not really that hard to grow but I I do notice that if you don't trellis them they'll grow all over the ground and that becomes all mixed in with the weeds and it's just not worth it so I would definitely trellis if you're gonna do watermelon and make sure you go to your internet and check your EC cables I did not do a very good job this year of trying to keep trying to keep it in range of any type of nutrient levels. One thing I can say about watermelon is use an air pump if you got it in this DWC setup. And make sure that it's down deep enough to get into your water. And I think what I'll do in the future is instead of using my IBC water, IBC totes, rainwater, I'll just use the city water. And I'll save my rainwater for the ground crops. I'll use the city water more for or hydroponic bins, these really heavy feeders, because they go through so much fertilizer, why not get the extra magnesium and calcium out of our hot water from our city water? Same thing with the zucchini and the, and the tomatoes. And squash. This one's pretty darn heavy. I've got to hang it from this pole just to keep it from falling on the ground and splitting open. We've already looked at the tendril here, nice and brown going into it, so let's see what we got. It's nice and hollow when I Hit on it, I see the stripes are thaw solid and thick, all indicators that it's done. I hope it's not overripe, let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and chop it right here. And let me put the phone down and then we'll put it on the table. About 14 pounds. It's a big boy. Okay guys, this thing is remarkably clean, but I did wash it off with some dish soap just to make sure you all get all the dust off. Cause I'm gonna save the skin and the rind. Freeze the rind and the skin and I'm gonna have little cubes that I cube up and freeze and mix into my smoothies. But right now I'm gonna cut it in half and try to save the, the inner part. Remember this watermelon is, I think somewhere somewhere I read it's 92% water. Well, humans are what, 70% water? It's definitely a hydrating type food. Great for dehydration, restoring electrolytes, loaded with vitamin B, A, C. I just think it's a good food. It's, it was fun to grow. Anyway, let's cut it up and see what we got. What I did was I chopped, I chopped the watermelon in half, put it down flat, and then I start chopping around it and got all the rind. That is, the rind is going to be wonderful in fruit drinks. That's full of citrulline and other good vitamins and amino acids. Lycopene is one of the main anti-inflammatory components of watermelon. Actually, it has more lycopene per, per gram, I believe, than does tomato. And then the citrulline, of course, is converted to arginine in the kidneys, apparently, and that's good for working out, muscle soreness afterwards, also for vascular function. So you just save that stuff, chop it into little cubes or throw it into your fruit drink, freeze it, have it on the ready for a few pieces in your, in your fruit drink mix. And then this, this is so good. Mmm, I can't tell you how sweet it is. I wasn't sure if it was going to be perfect, but look at that beautiful flesh. Crazy thing is, I just did a video on checking EC. Maybe I would have got more watermelon out of this plant if I had done EC and pH checks, because I know these are heavy feeders. But I thought with the EC being so low most of the season, and me not attending to it with replacement fertilizer, I thought for sure this would be pink and watery and there'd be no flavor but it is so yummy and juicy i don't know how it does it maybe it's the sunshine <laughs> but anyway i'm going to bring this in and share it so i just wanted to give you guys an update at first i wasn't sure if it's worth to grow it i just did one watermelon this year but i'm so happy i did it was really fun hmm. straight out of the freezer here let's put this right away into our blender with a little spirulina mm. gonna be good we've got some extra here for later but we're just gonna Pull out some of our frozen bananas and there's a pear that didn't get eaten. Doesn't look too pretty, but it works. You know. We also have tons of these super sweet tomatoes that we gotta use up, so might as well put some of those in there. Got a leftover peach that was only half eaten here. 
Might as well add some strawberries. Oh, I'd love to put a cup of Greek yogurt in there. Okay, I think adding an avocado along with some full fat yogurt, if you got it, will definitely give it a creamy, rich, smooth texture and help balance out some of that sugar so that it doesn't get absorbed as quick. Add a little filter water and I've got my monster Vitamix here. <laughs> All right, it's loaded, but that'll fill up a couple cups. Oh my gosh, it's good. I'll drink a little bit and throw some almonds in and then fill up a couple big mason jars so I have it for the next few days. Watermelon rind based smoothie, so good. I'm going to save these seeds. This watermelon, I believe is crimson sweet and it is so good. If it is crimson sweet, these are not F1 type seeds. And these wouldn't be F1 anyway because these are right from the watermelon in the beginning of the video. So they'd be F2, but whatever happened, they came out wonderful. So I'm gonna save these and put them in a Ziploc baggie after they dry out and use them next year. Remember seeds have to be very warm to germinate. So we'll have to figure out a way next year to do this. I'm debating put them in the ground, in a bed, near a structure to keep them warm, but with some black landscaping fabric over them and a pot or plastic bin over them, at least for several days until they do germinate and then carefully let them grow until I can get them into some bins. That way I wouldn't have to harden them as much outside. If I have them inside, I probably still need a heating mat because they do need those warmer temperatures before you'll get them to germinate. Also, they really shouldn't be expected to grow outside until the temperature gets up to at least 75 degrees in the day. They really like that warm temperature. So they'll probably just sit there in cooler weather and not do much if you can keep them alive. They'll just kind of go into stall mode until it gets warmer. These take about 90 days to get a full mature watermelon. So I'm going to consider trying some other types next year, but this is a winner. All right, guys, you might want to check out the video Grow Bigger, where I show in detail how I grew this watermelon along with other large fruiting plants in 32 gallon totes. I also used a Venturi valve to keep that water well aerated. And I have a series on Venturi bubblers as well that you might want to check out. All right, guys, you know I like growing my own food, but sometimes you have to kind of go out on the wild side. So instead of growing it, I bought this one. This is called a personal size melon. It was from a co-op. It's organic, and it's more the size that one or two people could eat without having to store it too long in the fridge. You can tell it was probably grown on the ground. It has that kind of creamy spot here. I bet it's good. Let's see if we can open it up and see what kind of flesh it has and if it has black seeds or not. All right, let's first chop off the, the edges here. All right, we got some nice, beautiful edges chopped off. That's such a small one. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of curve my cuts this way and then I'll section it into uh, fractions. It looks to me like this could be a seedless one. I, did, I went a little bit deeper with this third cut here on the end and I don't see any black seeds. Unfortunately seedless isn't really going to help me grow next year <laughs> but I bet it'll still taste good. Okay you can see how darn easy this is. You just slice and then kind of rotate the blade inward and boom you've got it. Okay we've got kind of a, a red globe of sweetness here and we've got all our rind chopped off for our future fruit drinks. And so I've cut these into smaller cubes and these are going right away in the Ziploc baggie into the freezer. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of make a quarter it and then eighth it. And then I don't know if I'll have enough to do sixteenths, but let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer, guys. I don't see any seeds in here hardly. I think this is considered a seedless. I did find one here, but it's not even black. And you know, I can save it and just throw it in next year to see if it'll germinate. But my understanding is a lot of these seedless watermelon have been treated with colchicine and they don't have two sets of chromosomes. They have, I, I think they have an abnormal number, like three sets of chromosomes. So they're probably sterile, these seeds. I'm gonna try it and see what it tastes like here and just let you know. I don't think it's as sweet as the crimson sweet was. You know, I would say if you have a choice, grow an heirloom, seeded watermelon. Honestly, the black seeds were so minor in the other one. It wasn't a big deal to spit a couple out or pick them out. So yeah, my feeling is if you can grow watermelon, grow the crimson sweet. Yeah, this is kind of disappointing, isn't it? The taste isn't nearly as powerful as a homegrown uh, watermelon. And there's no seeds for next year. Oh, well, it was a good experiment. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something and I hope this video inspired you to grow your own next year. Maybe even using the DWC method that I've shown you with my video. And I wish you all a great evening or a great day wherever you're watching this from. Take care.